Hey everyone, it's Jenny from the WOW Creative team. I hope you're all doing well today. I'm excited today because I've got two cards to share with you which feature the effects from the new WOW Changes Lightning Effects Kit. I'm gonna be showing you all three effects that you can get with these changes. And it's the first time I've been using these and they are so much fun. I cannot wait to show you them. So let me give you a quick look at the actual kit and what you get. So in the WOW Changes Lightning Effects kit, you get six WOW jars. Only three of them are filled with the effects and I'll show you why in a little bit in the video. So you get three effects. The first one is Sheen. That gives you a kind of pearly, almost metalline look. Glisten, which I will take off the top. You can take a quick look at it. It's kind of like a, a glittery, uh, very, um, neutral glitter and then texture which is kind of a, a chunky additive and these are additives so what you're going to do is mix them with your existing powders to get different looks so that's why you get three empty jars as well i highly recommend that you only mix up the amount of powder you're going to need for your card as best as you can guess or your project i'm going to be using them today with this park florals trio this is the first color I'm going to be using. This is Hydrangea. All three of them are opaque powders and they're a mix of different colors. So Hydrangea is like a pale blue, white, and pale red color. They're all flat. They don't have any effects or glitter in them. So I thought that'd be perfect to use with the wow changes. So let me show you what you're going to do. I'm gonna be using Glisten for my first card and I'm going to be using this spoon. Uh, you can use any spoon you have as long as you're able to kind of broadly gauge how much powder you're using. You want to use one part to one part. So one part of the changer to an equal size amount of the powder you're mixing it with. So I'm using two scoops, I actually only show you one there, but I'm gonna use two scoops of Glisten and two scoops of Hydrangea. Add it into one of those empty pots, give it a really good shake, make sure you keep the lid on, obviously, and then put it off to one side so we can do our stamping. I'm using this background stamp from Darkroom Door, it is called Butterflies Background, and uh, it's nature theme over at WOW this month, so I'm gonna be featuring some butterflies and a little bit later on some flowers. I've got a panel of WOW white cardstock here, trimmed to uh, four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I've did my background stamp, well, sort of let it cling to my craft mat so that it'll stay still. I'm inking it up with my WOW embossing ink pad and then rubbing this panel of cardstock all over the top of it. I have treated my cardstock with a powder bag to remove any static cling. Now it's really important that you use a metal spoon for doing your mixing. I forgot to mention that earlier. That's to avoid any static getting into the powder. So you may not know, but WOW jars are already treated so that they are not carrying lots of static cling in them. If you use a plastic spoon, uh, a lot of the powder will be stuck to that spoon due to static. And uh, that, for that reason, I recommend using a metal spoon. That's Marion's advice, and I always take Marion's advice. So as you can see, I only created enough uh, of the mix to cover my background. So it's, it's four scoops, two of the mixer and two of the uh, hydrangea. That means that I have very limited excess left. So what I like to do when I'm coating this entire panel is shake it over half of it, catch it in a coffee filter or some paper, filter it back into the pot and then uh, shake it out over again. So that way there's very, very little waste. You could of course create plenty of mixes using your changes and then keep them, but you'll need probably more than three empty jars if that's the case. I like to keep each of my empty jars dedicated to each of the types of changer. And I gave you a quick look at the embossed butterflies there after I'd heated it up with my heat gun and it just looks gorgeous. It lightens the color of the powder slightly and the, that pale blue and the red has gone almost to a kind of a pale rose. Uh, with lots of kind of uh, beautiful kind of shimmery glitter throughout. 
Now I'm going to be adding another mix now. This is azalea, which is like a deeper red and white from the Park Floral Trio. I'm doing two scoops again of that with two scoops of the sheen, which as I mentioned was a more pearly look to it. Especially on this when I mixed it with this powder, there's obviously uh, pieces of white in there. So where the white coats, you'll see it a bit later on when I give you a close up, where the white coats uh, the cardstock and uh, the sheen mixes in with it. It really does look like the pearl powder, uh, the pearlescent powder that you can get. And uh, using this Whimsy Stamps Flower Puffs background stamp, it's these really kind of cool etched florals that completely cover a background. So again, hence why I've used four scoops in total. And I'm doing my trick here of shaking it over the top of my embossed ink, embossing ink. Uh, scoop, catching it in a coffee filter, scooping it back up again, tipping it back into the jar. And if there are any areas where it didn't quite get coated, you can just uh, dab your panel into the coffee filter just to coat it completely. And here's a close look at it. I am trying to get you to see it in the light. It's quite tough. You'll see it in a sec. There you go. You can see that really pretty pearly sheen. And that pearl coats all over the, the red as well. And it does lighten it up a little bit. Now to use my background panels, I'm using these nesting frame dies from Ulta New, and I'm gonna use that largest frame first and die cut out my butterfly panel to start my first card. So I'm gonna run it through my die cutting machine and then what I'm gonna do is pop it up onto a 110 pound white note card that's four and a quarter by five and a half tall and uh, pop it up on foam tape just to get some dimension. I'm gonna keep these cards really clean and simple. I just really like the star of the show to be that background shimmer. So I'm using this Thankful 2 die by CZ Designs with Simon Says Stamp. And I've die cut it twice because there's two different layers, the back layer from some vellum and then the front layer from some pink cardstock. And then I'm going to adhere them together. I'll then pop it up in the center with some foam adhesive and you can see that pink really matches that kind of rosy pale rosy color in the shimmery background whereas before in the hydrangea it was more of a pinky red to add my sub sentiment this is from taylor's expressions one of their simple sentiment strips background stamps die cut with the coordinating die and popped up with a strip of foam tape and then i'm going to round the corners to match that background die and I will off camera add some enamel dots just to coordinate and add a pop of color. And that finishes my first card. For my second card, I've used that background die again. And this time I'm going to add some liquid adhesive on the back and then pop it onto a panel of vellum. This is cut to four inches by five and a quarter inches, just trimmed down with my paper trimmer. And then I will add my foam tape onto the back. And for that reason, it sandwiches the vellum about a quarter inch away or quarter, just two, three millimeters away from the panel of cardstock that is my card base. It kind of gives that floating vellum look. Uh, it's great for using this uh, technique over patterned paper to kind of tone it down a little bit or colored cardstock. I'm only using it over white, so it gives a kind of almost wedding feel, I guess. I'm going to be adding my third wow changer onto this die cut here. So I've die cut this thank you die from Alton U three times. I've glued two of them together to create almost like a chipboard look. And on this third one, I'm going to add my embossing powder. So this time I'm mixing the texture changer with um, the sunflower powder, which is the third, the bright yellow kind of mix from the Park Floral Trio. Love that color. It's like pale yellow and bright lemon yellow mixed together. So I'm mixing in three scoops of that and three scoops of the texture, just because this die cut's quite large and I like to coat my die cuts when I emboss over them twice. So I thought I'd better make sure that I had enough. And then give it a good shake. And then I'm gonna dunk that third thank you die into my embossing ink pad and then sprinkle over my mix. And you'll see it was a good job that I did do the three scoops of each. It wasn't quite enough. It wouldn't have been quite enough if I just had four scoops uh, in total. And then just to make sure I get it fully coated, I flipped it over with my pokey tool and uh, dunked it in a few times. And I did off camera repeat this again after I'd heated it. 
and I will give you a close up. So I'm just gonna heat it with my heat gun and then give you a close up look at, on the camera. You'll see that that em yellow embossing powder now has some huge chunky texture. And that's exactly what that third changer does. And I here's another look with a second layer super chunky and when you run your hands over it, it almost feels like sandpaper but it's still got that nice sheeny gloss really cool and i'm gonna add this over the top of my layered thank you that i already had set off to one side with some liquid glue pop it under some blocks to dry and you do need really strong adhesive because inevitably there'll have been some embossing powder heated up on the back of that top layer and uh, shiny embossing powder can be quite hard to stick so I recommend really strong liquid adhesive I use art glitter glue it's um, my tried and true tested glue I've tried many others uh, and uh, that's my favorite for strong ad adhering of die cuts to finish off I'm going to pop this tailored expression sentiment heat embossed in wow metallic rich pale gold trimmed out and popped up with some enamel dots. And that finishes my second card. I hope you've enjoyed. Be sure to check out the other tutorials over on the WOW Embossing YouTube channel. There's a couple of others on the WOW Changes and Marion herself gives you a more close up look at them. Have a wonderful day. Bye.